Hello folks, I'm Todd Kessner. I am a 4-H Western Heritage Instructor for the state of Montana. And today I wanted to go through the steps with you on how to build a paper cartridge, in this case for the 1851 Colt Navy. And paper cartridges became very popular with a uh, Colt revolver, uh, particularly after the military started adopting the Colt revolver during the Mexican War and wanting a quicker way to load the revolver rather than loose powder and ball and also a consistent way to load the revolver so shots were more similar from shot to shot. So to start off I want to take you through the things that you need to have uh, available to you to make paper cartridges and when you get all done we will have a finished product looks just like this which would be the paper cartridge for the 1851 Navy Colt. So let's take a look at what we need to have available to us to build this and we'll go from there. Well, I'm going to go through what you need to get started to build a paper cartridge for the Colt 1851 Navy. I'm going to start with this cartridge former. This one is from Mesa Winds from Tim Shaner, and he is in Kansas, and he builds these out of, out of aluminum. I'll show you how that gets used here in a little bit. So we've got a cartridge former. Uh, from that cartridge former, I made a template, and this template is what I use to draw out the shape of the cartridge that I then wrap around the former. We'll go through that as well. I've got projectiles. Uh, I've got two of different kinds setting here, and we'll take a look at, at each of these as we start building cartridges, uh, and, and I'll show you how to do that. So we've got two different uh, 36 caliber bullets uh, that we're going to take a look at, which one's better for, for building paper cartridge. I also have coffee filters. Coffee filters are uh, the, almost the perfect material to use to to build your paper part of the cartridge to hold the powder. So we've got these coffee filters available. And when I get all done, I can put them in, a, in an old-fashioned cartridge box and, and then there'll be a video on a different day on how to build the, build the cartridge boxes. But when I've finished all this up with my coffee filters, uh, my, my powder, of course, I didn't mention that. I've got uh, a flask of powder here. I've got a label that's 3F powder that's old Einsford. Uh, and I've also got a powder measure and I've got it set just a hair over 20 grains by volume of, of black powder. So we'll, we'll form the cartridge case, which is the, uh, made out of the paper filter, coffee filter. We'll fill that case uh, with the powder and then we'll glue our bullet in and we'll go through that step by step. Uh, one of the first things I want to show you how to do, and it's, an, it's sort of optional, you can start with, with either your plain coffee filter, which is just bought from the store. You, they can be white, they can be brown, either one. Uh, but I, I, I like the brown because of the old-fashioned look to it. Uh, you can do that with just a plain paper or a, a coffee filter. Or you can take that coffee filter and nitrate it. This is one that I've already nitrated and have cut some patterns out of so you can see that it's an irregular shape. Uh, but nitrating helps this burn and not leave a, a solid deposit of paper in your chamber when you're done. All right, so we're gonna take our nitrated paper. This is some that I had done earlier and it's dry and ready to go. Uh, and use our paper former to start making the, the, the paper tubes that would hold the powder. So this is the, uh, the former, it's sort of a, a cone shaped with a flat bottom. And I was able to take this, take measurements off of the uh, top of it and the diameter of the bottom of it and the length that I wanted the cartridge. And from that then could make a, little template that helps me draw out the cartridges as far as the tube goes. I'm going to turn that over, get that more on the you know, closer to the edge there. And I've got several of these deep. You can you can cut these four or five deep. I've got three of them stacked up right now. So I'm just going to trace around that and we're going to make three cartridges out of each tracing because I've got it stacked up three deep. So let me do that. And I'm gonna get that on there. Let's do, so we'll have six all together. That way we'd make ourselves a cylinder full. And take that off. Then I'm just gonna cut these out. Very simple process. They're just a little bit long because they've got a, a, a little bit of room for a tab sort of on the end of them that would overlap so that you can glue these things around your cartridge former. So I'm gonna get this. And then we're gonna fill it full of powder. And the goal is to have this nitrated paper leave nothing behind but some 
some ash and pretty much disintegrate when that cartridge goes off. Now I'm going to just go ahead and trace this out, or cut along my tracing rather. And that's going to leave me with, get this thing wrapped around, just cut that out of the way. And this is going to leave me with six of these. All right, so I'll pull these apart. I've got six pieces that will make the uh, the tube portion. I'm going to put this back together, and I'm going to make the bottom. And for a 36 caliber paper cartridge, probably the best template out there is just a regular dime. So let me even this up a little bit. Actually, I'm going to use this out on the end so I don't waste too much of it. And I'm just going to trace out a dime because I need this base piece. This is a piece that makes the bottom of the paper cartridge. I'm going to do a couple of these and then we'll cut these out. So it's a, not a terribly difficult process. Really, and when I uh, when I'd seen paper cartridges, bought a few, and they were all the ones that I purchased were were made with round ball. Uh, I haven't found any that to purchase that were made with a conical bullet. Now this is a little more historically correct for a paper cartridge to be made with a conical bullet. All right, so there's three on the base. Let me put my paper back together, cut out three more. Okay. And I'm going to move my paper out of the way, just trim this up a little bit. There we go. Move my dime out of the way. So now I've got some scraps here that I can move, but I've got a base and I've got the actual portion for the tube. So one of the things that uh, I don't believe that I mentioned when I was talking about what you need uh, is this, this is just Elmer's multi-purpose glue stick. This thing, this seems to work about as good as, as anything. And uh, I just put a little bit on the on that narrow end where I've got that tab formed there. And I pull out my cartridge former and I'm gonna wrap this right around this funnel shaped cartridge former. So I've got myself a tube now wrapped around there. So that's the first step. And now I'm gonna take one of the bottoms Sometimes getting them apart is the hardest part. And I'm going to put glue right around, all the way around the edge of the bottom of this coffee filter here. And this is where your former comes in handy. And you can actually do this uh, with a tapered dowel. Uh, it doesn't, you don't have to have the, the former necessarily, although this makes it quite a bit easier and pretty consistent. You can see on the bottom that there's a it's narrower down below and I can squeeze that right down there till that becomes sort of flush. And now I've got the tube shaped cartridge with the bottom. So I can pull that off of there and I've got basically the paper cartridge. And so it's just as easy as that. Uh, some people find this very tedious and it kind of is, uh, but it's one of those things that you can sit around and do in the dead of winter and make up paper cartridges and then have them for the following spring and summer to be able to show Western Heritage members really what paper cartridges were like in the 1860s and 1850s for that matter, late 1840s. So I'm going to do another one of these. And again, this is for a 36 caliber, and the diameter of, the, of most of the projectiles is 375. Well, 375 is 3 eighths of an inch, so you can get a 3 eighths of an inch dowel and taper it and be able to make 
at least a cartridge former for the rolled part and then you can just kind of take the bottom and glue it around so you don't necessarily have to have one of these but it sure is handy so there's my second one I'm gonna pop it back out of here and uh, again I've got my little cocoon here and I'm gonna do this uh, the next uh, four times and then we're gonna move on to the powder so I've got six of these all done ready to take the next step and so it's really hard to get them exactly right when you're rolling them around this this tapered mandrel I guess you'd call it so I take it to the there's marks on here for uh, different size bullets so I use the top one for the bullet that I'm using uh, it just works out that way for 20 grains and so I put a mark on that top line uh, with a pencil you can kind of you kind of feel it through the paper and I trim it just a little bit to get these uh, uniform with that top line when you put this bottom on we've got not only double layer of nitrated paper uh, but also glue in there and so that's where your nitrated paper really comes in handy uh, is that it'll help disintegrate that area down the bottom where there's double thickness of paper plus glue uh, where non-nitrated paper sometimes won't because of that ring of glue in there so it is helpful to have that paper nitrated so I've trimmed it I'm going to put it back in here just to kind of keep it open it's easier to to keep that open and handle it I want us back in the form and I've got a flask here like I said earlier it's 30 grains of of um, or excuse me 3f black powder and it's got a 30 grain spout on it I'm gonna load up uh, 20 grains one thing about these uh, they're not hundred percent accurate I've got a 20 grain spout but if you put your finger on it uh, especially if you're working with glue you stick to the powder you, your finger goes down inside you don't get a consistent throw every time so I just go ahead and use a powder measure and so that your your finger doesn't print down inside and start picking up powder and I'm going to get this right to the top at just a hair over 20 grains for all practical purposes it's 20 21 maybe 22 grains but it just seems to work well with these cartridges so I've got that loaded up and I'm just simply going to go ahead and pour my powder down inside of that cartridge case and I've nearly filled it up kind of bent the edge over a little bit that could be a problem later so I'm going to pull that back out and it's amazing how much the black powder will almost compress without even compressing it and I'm just tapping it down a little bit and then I glue in my projectile I've got a couple examples uh, this projectile here came from a Lee mold and it's got a, uh, two grease grooves in it. It's uh, kind of the same diameter right across the, the grease grooves and down to the base. It's 375 and uh, about 130 grain bullet for a 36 caliber 51 Navy. Now this other one came from a era's gone bullet mold uh, that is a historic copy of the Colt bullet. And what's nice about this particular bullet and interesting is right around the bottom, it's got what they call a heel. And so that part of the bullet has a smaller diameter. You can see that this diameter is the same as in between the grease grooves and all the way up until the curvature will give of the, of the bullet. This one has a heel on it. So I could, can, the closest thing to kind of reference this with in today's world would be the 22 um, cartridge. So a 22 long rifle, long or short, would all have a heeled bullet stuck down in the case so that the case and the uh, edge of the cartridge above the case are the same, same diameter, but it's heeled to fit down inside the case. That's what this is. Uh, this is a heeled bullet, and it's a copy of the Colt bullet, and it is... Um, uh, very historically correct for the period. What makes this handy is it's going to fit down inside of my, my paper cartridge more easily than this one. I've done it with these, hard to do, uh, made it work, but this heeled bullet not only is it historically correct but fits a lot better. So I'm going to put just take my same glue and I'm going to just put a ring of glue right around that heel on this bullet. This one is not lubricated yet, we'll save that for another day. And I'm going to then put this heeled bullet, try not to get a lot of glue on the bottom of the bullet. I'm going to put this heeled bullet right down inside of the paper cartridge, right down on the paper. Then I can pull that back out. 
kind of inspect it a little bit. Sometimes I kind of tug them up on the on the bottom to snug them up a little bit on, right to the bottom of that uh, heel, the top of that heel. And I've got myself a 36 caliber paper cartridge that I can shoot uh, out of a Colt 1851 Navy. Could shoot it out of a Remington 36 caliber. And I've got a 226 grain bullet with this healed bullet uh, with 20 to 22 grains of, of black powder. We'll do one more just to go through the steps again. I'm going to again, I'm going to mark this at that upper groove as soon as I find it. There it is. Trim it real quick. So Samuel Colt had upwards to 200 women working for him that made paper cartridges. He started out with men, found that men were not careful enough, were not meticulous enough, and didn't pay enough attention to detail to put out the quality of product that he was looking for. So he got rid of men making paper cartridges and hired women, which worked out very well for Colt until there was an accident. And when you're working with black powder, and uh, you have a, a careless moment with 200 people working in a almost a factory type situation, rolling paper and filling them full of powder. Uh, accidents can happen, and unfortunately it did. And I'm trying to remember how many women were killed. It was upwards of 20 to 27 women were killed in that accident of making paper cartridges. So you got to be careful. Uh, did not do Colt a whole lot of good for his reputation within the community. Matter of fact, people were really, really upset with him, and I don't blame him. And he had to make some safety changes, and, and uh, Civil War was on, so they went forward and kept making paper cartridges. Uh, hopefully learned a lesson too late for 27 women, unfortunately. And there we go again. Again, I can kind of use my thumbnail and snug it up a little bit to the bottom of that, top of that heel. And we've got a paper cartridge ready to go. Uh, what I did want to mention is if you have um, bullets from Ears Gone Bullet Mold or any kind of projectile, you can do it with round ball for that matter. There's no reason you can't do this with round ball. If you're doing it in your 4-H Western Heritage Project uh, meeting, uh, definitely do not measure out black powder. You can use cornmeal. And uh, you would have a, with a regular coffee filter, not a nitrated one, and you'd be able to use a dowel. You can wrap your cartridge. You can uh, put the bottoms on. You can fill it with cornmeal. And then you can put a projectile on top. And each of your project members, 4-H'ers, will have an inert uh, black powder paper cartridge. And uh, really, that's how you do it. Uh, we would lubricate these at some point, and we'll also, in a different video, talk about how to make the, uh, the boxes for storage, historically correct boxes for storage, and how they were, they were wrapped with the, with the drawstring uh, to rip them open. And uh, these are for 44s. I've got a, a, a different pattern for the 36 caliber, and we would put a, a paper wrapper around them, very historically correct, and that's the way a soldier, or anybody buying them from a hardware store, uh, would, would pick these up if they were buying paper cartridges. So that's the story. We'll move on uh, later to do, do more with them, and we'll have them out at the range sometime shortly. Let's take a look at this one and compare it to the unnitrated paper. I don't know if you can hear the sizzle. But you can see how black it gets. It's basically turning it into soot. Keep that flame on there if I can. There we go. So one of the things that the nitrated paper, and in the test, looking back on it, didn't look all that terribly convincing. Uh, but you got to kind of take my word for it a little bit. But when you, uh, 